Hey guys, it's Eric with the Miller Park Minute, where we throw strikes and get likes, hit dingers and get listeners. We mm-hmm. are back again, and we are now with our co-host here. Uh, I'd like to introduce the podcast to Rob, aka Hi, the everybody. Butcher. Hi everybody. Give us a little bit about yourself, Rob, and uh, tell us what brings you to the uh, Miller Park Minute podcast. Um, my name is Rob, AKA the butcher. I, um, am a big avid baseball and Milwaukee Brewers, um, obsessive fan. Um, if you know me, you know that all I talk about is baseball. And I used to run a, a podcast from the area called the five tool podcast with a couple friends. And we like to talk shit and we like to talk about baseball and it was a lot of fun. And we used to have our friend Eric here on quite a bit. He was our favorite guest that we had on the regular and he always brought the thunder and, and um, he enjoyed talking to me about baseball. So he asked for me to come on for a few episodes here at the Miller Park Minute and assist him with talking baseball. And what better day to come on and talk ball than the first day of Brewer spring training games. Opening, opening spring training, right? Yeah. It doesn't get any better than the feeling that we watched a live baseball game or, and, or in my case, listened to a live baseball game today. Yeah, yeah, it's it's the culmination of like such a whirlwind of emotions bringing us to this point after a 99 day lockout. Like I was just joking with people today, like 10 days ago, we weren't sure if we were going to have baseball. And today we were watching spring. I mean, yesterday, even we were watching spring training baseball games. And today we were watching Brewers. Like, And just so recently, we weren't sure what was going to happen. We, we, we thought maybe we get a shortened season. We thought maybe we would have no season. We thought we didn't know what the season was going to look like. And honestly, at this point, we're still not sure what some things are (laughs) going to look like. We we're not sure if we're, if we're going to have a zombie run around second at this point yet. But I mean, the point is we're, we got ball being played. Like pitchers are throwing baseballs to live batters (laughs) to opposing teams. Life is good. And, and name position players are actually starting. That's the kind of unique and awesome part about right now is like, you're getting a Christian Yelich in the lineup. You're getting Willie Adamas. You're getting Hunter Renfro. Uh, you're getting help me here. I don't remember who all played. <laughs> I mean, you had he, you had Hero take a couple at bats. Oh yeah, Hero Adamas. was up there, got some swings. Adamas, J- Jace Peterson leading off. Yep, that's that's <laughs> interesting. Uh, so yeah, I mean, go on. Yeah, so so I think what we'll do is we'll break down some of the game, and then we'll talk about the moves and. I mean, there's just so much excitement. We may riff off for far longer than we even want to at this juncture, but who knows. Um, One of the things I'm going to mention is this is hopefully going to be a regular thing with Rob here. Uh, Rob is a star of the Superfans documentary, mini documentary. (laughs) It's it's on the YouTube channel, so if you go back and check the YouTube channel... um, you can see Rob's lovely face and his beautiful place. I mean, if if you watch for nothing else, watch watch for his house because his house is amazing. <laughs> no, well, but it was, anyways, it was a good time. Lovely we had documentary. Fun with that. We had fun with that. We really did, and that's I I like to to work with people that I think are interesting and unique in their own way, and um, that's part of the reason that Rob is here. Is he is interesting, unique. Uh, he's actually supporting a brewer shirt, which is really, I think, like a first time I've seen this. Uh, most yeah, of the time, the guys wear it right. like a wife beater when I see him. So, oh, <laughs> I dropped my mom. Oh, that's, that's usually I'm flexing. Pro. But back to your documentary. It, I mean, and that documentary really speaks to what you were saying. You like to speak to unique people who are passionate about the game, and that's what that that documentary really shows is the passion, the passionate fans around the area that you've encountered over the years. Yeah, and there's there's still more. I mean. I, I said it when I when I created it originally that I was going to actually create multiple of them, and I have them in the wings, and I have these people waiting. It's just a matter of getting the time to do it. Uh, I'm going to be getting my bachelor's degree actually here in two months. So nice. Look at this um, guy. Yeah, a little flex there. You have to start yeah. charging for. You're going to have to start charging for content once you. Right, get right. This degree. is going to be a premium channel after. <laughs> After a while here, but right. so let's talk about the game first, and let's then we'll kind of riff off here. Um, this game was really 
it was kind of an interesting build because when when I first looked at it, I saw Clayton Kershaw on the mound to start a spring training game. Versus, versus even small. Small. I'm like, whoa, this is weird. And like they're firing, well, they're they're gone at the at the beginning. And I know Kershaw isn't the best thing that they have, but he's still a really good pitcher. And holds they're like we they decided we just paid you. We got to get you out on the bump right away. Well, Ethan Small is no slouch. This is a guy that's basically big league ready. Like we're gonna see him this year in some big league action. I don't think he's gonna be starting games quite, but I mean he's he's pretty much ready for action and he held his own. And what was really nice to see is yeah, let's throw the Brewers up against a lefty right off the bat. You know, a, a, an established lefty like a, a Hall of Famer, Clayton mm-hmm. Kershaw. And what what did we do? We got two runs on the guy. I mean, Mario Feliciano got got the hit on him, and it's like that's that's the quite the biggest question I think to this team this year is: Are we going to be able to hit left-handed pitching? Because that's what destroyed us um, back. That's what destroyed us back in the playoffs against the Braves. That's been our crutch all all of 2021 is that we can't hit the left-handed the left-handed pitching, and that's why we went out and got Hunter Renfro, and that's why we went out and got Andrew McCutcheon. So right, and those. The, and and that was an interesting one too because I was like, okay, so you got Renfro in there, you got Yelich in there, um, and then we saw Dahl, um, who I I forgot he was even on I our did roster too. until I today. Told, I was like, same with I White. I could have sworn he was. I thought he was a Cub. Yeah, White too. Yeah, that was an interesting. I was like, oh, look at him. He's on our team. Good to know. Right. You know, it's, right. There's some faces here that we got. Like, I don't know who this Reitz guy is. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> right, right. Well, there was a point in the broadcast. Reitz. There was a point in the broadcast when uh, the the second pitcher to come out after Kershaw came out, and he just had a number on, and the broadcast guys didn't know who the heck he was. Um, yeah, well, it's number ninety one. So you know, and that's kind so of spring you, training in a nutshell. But so for real, yeah. I mean, you didn't see. I mean, half of the pitchers for the Dodgers were. We're minor league guys. They threw out Bruce Dargratter all he threw an inning, got a strikeout. They threw out Clevenger, he had two K's, pretty nice inning. But otherwise they were they were throwing out a lot of their triple A guys as well. But I mean, yeah, it was interesting that they came out with, with Kershaw. Right. I thought that was an interesting a, weird way to lead off a uh, a first spring training game, but 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 here's the thing. I mean, like we we held up against their starters when they were in the game. Mm-hmm. Like our pitching held up against their starters when when they were in the game, and and it was a we only gave up three runs as a pitching staff against the the highest paid uh, baseball team in baseball, and they won a spring training. It's a it's a nice little a nice little day. Um, Corey Ray is still terrible. It appears. I don't know. I don't know how much more minimum salary we should be throwing at him. I I, I honestly I, when they said that he was playing in the game, I was like. Oh, um, he's not cut yet. I, I feel like in 2018, we had a conversation where it was like, all right, this is his last effort. This is the last effort of Corey Ray. Right, right, right. <laughs> and, then, and here we are. He made a major league Still debut last away. year. And, he didn't strike out. Yeah, and now we're talking about him playing in spring training again. But um, I mean... Yeah, we don't have to talk too much about Corey Ray. That's no, funny. no, but uh, another interesting one, Matthias got in this game, um, and Matthias was pretty good. The thing that we have right now and what that we're, we're seeing is we have these bevy of, like, a David Dahl and a Tyler White. Um, is it Tyler, right? It's Tyler White, not Taylor White? Tyler White, yeah. Okay. You're right. You're uh, right. You know, we have these infielders here that are kind of just, like, stuck in a limbo spot that aren't really, unless massive injury take place, I yeah, wouldn't expect them to go anywhere. They are strictly, they are not guys we're keeping around for any other reason than for death. Right. I'm telling you. I mean, Matthias, he's more borderline, like, that guy could maybe ball. But Tyler White, I'm thinking, David Dahl. David Dahl's still young, and he's mashed. When he mm-hmm. was with the Cubs, he mashed for a period. Um, but yeah, they're depth. They're completely depth plays. They are not our triple A. They are not our, they are not our farm per se, you know? So we see, we see six hits to five hits. Um, Dodgers had six, we had five. Um, and then that Tyler White hit, that was an infield 
hit. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, I remember that one. That was. Yelly had a hit. I. Uh, it was funny. Yelly I, had a nice hit. I was Yelly speaking. Had a great hit. I was speaking ill of Yelly, at a moment. You were. I'm, and you I were. got told to shut my mouth. And uh, then he got a hit right after I spoke ill of him. So maybe the, it, the secret sauce is I need to speak ill of him. And it was it was not a great pitch, but not a bad pitch. A little up and away, but he 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 pushed it. He got it to right center field. I mean, no, he got it to to left center field. He pushed it away, and it was it was a quality hit. So that's a good sign. Game one, Yelich is hitting. He's turning it around this year. Yes, he is. I agree. I. I I don't know about Hira. Um, Drew's still out on Hira, um, but that's why we have a guy like Rowdy Velez. So, do you think we're going to be seeing Hira played in a DH role, or what? What role do you see Keston Hira playing for the Brewers in 2021? Because now we have they, they already said Kutch is going to be a guy who's going to be um, DHing more often than not. Yeah. So that's obviously when you got right-handed pitching. So maybe and Keston Hira because he is a switch hitter. Maybe you got him. DHing because you don't want him playing in the field. He's he's always the worst position player whenever he's out right. the field. Right, he doesn't have that skill. See, we we had a, a young shortstop that was similar to that, where he was either mashing or he was, um, you know, making good defensive plays. Uh, that shortstop departed and went to uh, a team that won, won a World, World Series. Series. So he, he became he became a World Series champion. So. Yeah. I mean, there is use for those players in in the league. He was a, well, well, that that player was a was a quality defensive shortstop, whereas Heston Hero was literally the worst defensive second baseman in I believe 2019 yes. and 2020. <laughs> yes, very true, very true. Um, which is why we had to move him to first. Which is why maybe this year's the year to to really see can he DH. If you are just focused, Keston, on hitting, if you are only focused on this one task, you pop that ball out of the damn park. Get back to that. You don't have to worry about feeling a position. Don't even buy a glove. You don't need one. Right. You just need batting gloves. Right. And you right. go out there and you hit dingers. That is what you are here for because he is so capable of, of, of slugging. Yeah, like that is bad. what he is paid for. So uh, I, this is this is the year for him to prove himself. I definitely think the dude's got a bat. And I think that given given that, I think if he can hit consistently and not have to worry about fielding, his face that's hilarious um who <laughs> cut his face there's a there's a graphic of him uh so i'm gonna just the sidebar of this real quick because this is a funny topic Kutch, we, we were talking about his jersey this morning he changed to 24 um yeah. well the reason Kutch changed to 24 was he didn't uh hunter renfro didn't know that 12 was available so hunter renfro wanted the number 12 then 24 became available for Kutch. Well, yeah. Kutch took 24 because he's a big fan of Griffey. Griffey, right. So there was a there was a little snippet on the website, and there's a video, and then Ken Griffey calls him, and he's talking to Ken Griffey on the phone. It's kind of a cool little thing. Uh, but there was... Oh, it's, it's just the funny little things. I watch all that stuff. I'm just a nerd that way. Yeah, that stuff's cool. I, I, I liked Kutch in five for some reason. I thought that was sexy. And then he changed, and I'm like, I, li- I like that. 24 is a lucky number for the Brewers. Like, we've had good players where 24. Mm-hmm. So I, 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 I'm i kind of that way and, like, more of a superstitious, like, because, like, I was worried about 12, that that uh, that Renfro went with 12, because we haven't had good luck with number 12 players. Right. Like, name one, name one good player that wore number 12 for the Brewers. It, does, it hasn't happened. Carlos Villanueva. He wore 12. Yeah. Okay. Not bad. <laughs> Not bad. All right. All right. Checkmate. Checkmate. I'm deep in, I'm deep in obscure brewer name knowledge. God damn. I need like a holder. I need like a phone holder for this. <laughs> it's okay. We're like two minutes or like 10 minutes and we, we don't have to worry about swearing anymore. So we got the Rangers tomorrow at three oh five, and I saw that um, Perdomo right is getting yeah, going Perdomo. on the bump. He's a big boy. He's like six eight. He yeah. would be so scary to face on the mound. I think he's really going to turn out to be a great pitcher. They got Dunning going. He's a good pitcher. What was I going to say about the Rangers though? Oh, Corey Seager homered today mm-hmm. with them. 
That's scary. That their lineup got better in the off season, and that's something that's kind of overshadowed now because they made their improvements pre lockout. They right. didn't have to do any moves after the lockout. The Rangers, so they're a nice, scary team, and it'll be fun to to face up against them. It'll be interesting to see what kind of lineups they're dishing out tomorrow. I think I think it'll be interesting because we'll see it. This spring training, I think, is going to be one of the most interesting spring trainings we've seen in a long time because of the fact that you. Yeah, and they were talking about this on the broadcast. These guys got to get there at bats. They have yeah. an unlimited amount of games. You know, you used to stroll Christian Yelich out there in week Bless two of week. spring training, yeah. get him his 40 at bats, set him down. You can't do that right now. You can't do that. Yeah. You can't not start and stretch out your relievers, your your starters. You can't not do that with any of these guys. So it's right, kind of like ready to go. primed baseball. It's like you yeah. just push that little primer on the on the gas tank, and you're you're ready to go. We're we're getting ready to go here. So, yeah, and like we talked about before, we got got rolling here. Like, uh, not not just that they're starting their starters right away, but like these moves just happened. Freddie Freeman just signed with the Dodgers, and now he's gonna, probably going to be playing tomorrow. Like, right? Uh, the hot stove has never been in spring. The hot stove has never been while the the football hot stove and free agency is going on. It's never been during March madness. This is a crazy time in sports. Like it's constant electric, elect, electric energy going on right now with baseball starting right now. And it's really cool. And it's a lot of fun. <laughs> rest in peace. Number one wide receiver for the green and gold. Yeah. Rest in peace. Yeah. So we don't, have, we don't have to talk much about football, but it's a shame <laughs> that the, the green Bay Packers front office has failed its fan base and its team time and time again. And now they couldn't get it. The most important deal of all, like, like you needed those two deals, the Rogers right. deal and the Adams deal. And the fact that they didn't just sign him last year when they had a chance, you know, they didn't just sign him last year before the franchise tag. And then like they franchise tagged him and then it's like, okay, we'll make you a good offer now that somebody else did. And he was probably just sitting there like, no, you guys have chance after chance. Right. It's pathetic. It's pathetic. That's the worst. It's the worst front of office in football outside of maybe Jacksonville or Cleveland. And let's talk about that for a minute. Well, it's not not necessarily football, but let's talk about we're we're at a stage here where we're we're coming off four years in a row of really good baseball. Um, playoff twenty twenty. Well, okay, twenty twenty. We had a losing year. season. That's we like had a, a losing season, but it's a goofy year. It doesn't count. Throw it out as a playoff. It's playoffs. Right, but so so we've been in the and we're we're now at a stage here where we're not out there making and you know okay some of these teams that we're looking at the Dodgers, um, the Mets, you know these guys are super teams. Blue Jays, oh my God, we haven't even talked about the Blue Jays. The they Blue Jays are disgustingly are good right insane. now. Insane. They're going to win a hundred games. It's it's in a tough division. They're going to run away with it. They're going to run away with it. The the Yankees are a thing of the past. It's the Blue they're Jays' fucked. time. It, it's the Red it's Sox amazing. Are too. And that I, lineup I, is is yeah. Go on. I, you know, <laughs> it's that's a whole another show. Um, yeah, but. I think we got to take some time to appreciate that we're kind of at a stage where we're just adding and making things happen here. Like, okay. Years back when we, when we made the push and I remember making this video and I was questioning the hell out of David Stearns and I've questioned David Stearns a lot in my time on the airwaves here, but we chose to go with Freddie Peralta, Corbin Burns, homegrown, and and Brandon Woodruff. And now, if you if you circle back a, several years back, we had an infield laden with homegrown talent, and that band got broke up and didn't really work out, and only one guy stayed around for a long term. Uh, but you know, a lot of things happened to those players, so whatever. But I was just so like shocked and awe that we were even going to attempt to go with those guys you know like i remember my gut reaction in my video was like what the hell are we doing out here you know like there was i a mean time i was exciting burns, but there was a time when people were like like corbin burns was terrible yeah like before he got lasik and stuff like he was garbage 
And like after Freddy's debut, like he hit a point where like he wasn't throwing very well too. But right. like we stuck with these guys, and we just we and wrote it out. And now yeah. through those decisions, we we come to an off season, and we're like, okay, you know. And we were just talking before the pod even started, before we got on the air here, and we we're just talking about how it, we're basically we know what we got. You know, we don't really see any any major free agent moves, and we don't really got to talk about them. I mean, yeah, it's fun to dream, and I hinted at Freddie Freeman yesterday in the podcast that I, or no, I was recording the podcast Thursday night, and Freddie Freeman literally got signed while I was recording my podcast, because I was recording it super late at night, and I'm like, really? We don't even need to, like, I remember doing a video talking about how we should have signed Bryce Harper, and how we could have afforded to do that, and I still believe that that's very, very true. We could have. I mean, look at the deals that we've put on the table since. But it's funny that we're at a point now where we have pre arb players that are locks. Yeah. I mean, I, I have a video sitting on the SD card waiting to get uploaded <clears throat> talking about Josh Hader, and he's a pre arb player. Did you know he's going to break 500 strikeouts this year? He's going to. Yeah. He's, he's gonna... pre arb. Yeah. He, he's That's pre arb. You know, like. That's it, insane. It's, We've gotten so much value out of these guys. We got a Cy Young out of a out of an arbitration or pre arb player, like Brandon Woodruff. We're not paying these pitchers yet, and 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 two infielders. So the too. window is, so the so the window is closing in regards to that. Like, right, we right. Win and and that and that is kind of the concern though. Like, I, I, yes, we got to give David Stearns his credit. David Stearns is the best GM in the national league as far as I'm concerned, because mm-hmm. we've gotten four playoff appearances and the only, the only superstar like signing, like we're superstar money that we have on the table. now is Christian Yelich. Right. That's the like, only, that's big the money only deal. major, that's the only big money deal. Whereas the Dodgers have eight former all stars that they got to pay. And that's like big money. Like they're paying, they're paying those guys real money, like franchise player money. I know we've already discussed this, but how long is, <coughs> how long do we got control on Adamus? Um, I think it's two more years. He's twenty six right now, so we got him through twenty eight, maybe. Let me check. And the same with Urias too. I mean, those are two young guys that I mean, I think Urias is prime for a breakout, and uh, Adamus, if he just continues the course. Arias seems like he's going to be a guy who's batting in the 280 range every single year, like, you know, above that, you know, two, three win, wins above replacement a year. Mm-hmm. He seems like he is a solid baseball player and a guy that we would want to lock up for sure. Because, yeah, he's he's great at second base. He's great at shortstop. He's a serviceable defender. And you want to have that guy. I think, you know, things in the past, and we were talking about this a little bit too with the uh, McCutcheon deal between us the other day is one of the things in the past that we didn't really have is we had guys that, and this is the nature of the way the game has changed. We had guys that slotted in at their position and only their position. Ryan Bar- Braun got moved. That was yeah. the only player out in that 10 year period that was moved from their position outside of like a Billy Hall, who was kind of the major utility Ooh. guy. Right. Or, yeah. Yeah, but other than that, we haven't had these players that are that are flexible, and we haven't had this flexibility of infielders and position players that we've had under the David Stearns era. I mean, well, we've been we've been running out Eric Sogard, you know, we've been running out Travis Shaw, right? Like we've had some some god awful infield play, and honestly, you know, I tutor Orlando Arcia's horn quite a bit. But it, he's had some pretty negative defensive metrics, actually. Like he makes flat. He's a lot like Derek Jeter, where he makes he would make the flashy play, but then he would miss miss plays, make them look hard, and miss plays that shouldn't be missed. Right. So honestly, he wasn't a great defender, <laughs> much like Derek Jeter. But but we, yeah, how we were chatting out Tyler Saladino. Like yeah, we we have an infield now, bro. I, I told you this the other day, and I, I still have to laugh about it. Those Grand Slam, uh, those back-to-back days, or I think it was two but days apart. Grand or whatever. He Grand Slams. Those vi- videos, I put those highlights on, and they got, like, hella views. And 
Somebody, like a lot of them were like, who the hell is this guy? Two grand slams in two days? What the hell? I've never heard of this player in my life. Flash you know? in the pan. And Flash then he, the I think pan. he went to Japan or something like that. Or I'm pretty KBO. sure he's... KBO. I'm pretty That's what it is. KBO. You got I think written down? Did you, just, did you just look at your paper and look at K, KBO? You got Tyler Saladino's career stat sign in paper? Yeah. <laughs> him, and, him and Thames are uh, buddies right yeah, now. Yeah, and Thames. <laughs> <laughs> no, Thames is back. He's with the A's. What? Oh, Thames I missed that with one. The A's on a, a oh. mi- he's on the minor league deal with the A's. Yes. He's going to replace uh, Matt Chapman. Or not Matt Chapman, uh, Matt Olson. Matt Olson, yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. All right. So about that, Freddie Freeman, like, seriously, though, Freddie Freeman is a Dodger. And he's not a Brave. He was a guy that was supposed to spend his entire career in Atlanta. He spent 12 years with the Braves. And now he's with the Dodgers, and they went and got somebody younger and prettier. Well, he, I wouldn't say pretty. I think Freeman's a little more handsome for my liking. He, he's a little more tall, right? You know, broad shoulders and all that. But Freddie Freeman is a Dodger, and that's that's interesting. And Freddie Freeman said he was hurt by that deal. Like he wasn't happy about that. He expected to stay with the Braves, and that's an interesting thing that happened. So who pulled the trigger um, first? Who do you think pulled the trigger first on that? Do you think that the, think, the Braves just thought that it was I a foregone conclusion, and they're like, "No, f you, we're we're done." I think the Braves didn't want to play hardball with the Dodgers and the Yankees and all these other teams that were in the mix. I think the Braves were already talking to. Oakland about Matt Olson probably in the off season as a as an alternative, you know, because Oakland's been planning this fire sale. Oakland does not keep their players. They do not keep their superstars above age 31, 32. They will always trade them. They don't care about their franchise. I would be sad if I was a fan of theirs. But yeah, no, certainly the Braves, the Braves were talking to Olson first, and the deals are very similar. Olson got more years, but but Freddie's got to pay more taxes in California. So it's it's pretty much like, oh, man. Sorry, I'm getting a call quick. Okay. So with that being said, we are, we are really moving through the, uh, the free agency here. Uh, it looks like Castellanos live on the podcast. Five oh, no, years, where is he? Five the years, Bruins? 100 million to the Philadelphia Phillies. Live, Splash. live, just happened as I was as I was wow. talking about. I was about to say who's still out there. Uh, so uh, obviously not Nick Castellanos anymore, uh, but Carlos Correa is still out there. Trevor Story is still out there. Uh, Canley signed today. Oh, I just got a okay, Castellanos five years, a hundred million dollar deal. Interesting, and they got Schwarber. And they got Schwarber. That's crazy. And they got Schwarber. Did you know Corey Knave was with them? To Philly? Yeah, yeah. I did see that move, actually. I didn't actually. know that. I did see that move. Um, that's that's nasty, dude. That East is stacked. Like, I know the Phillies are cursed and they can't win and stuff. And they they seem to always float around 82, 85 games. But, like, you're talking Bryce Harper, Nick Castellanos, Kyle Schwarber, who mashes. <laughs> Right, like a madman. Like this is a that is a nasty. They're gonna nasty hit a crap lineup. ton of home runs. They are gonna hit oh a crap ton goodness. of dingers. I'm just looking to see anybody we missed because one of the things me and Rob do is we go back and forth on moves. Um, Deakman, we saw Doolittle, Duffy, Duffy got a one year, huh? And Duffy, yeah. Matt Duffy. Oh, Matt Duffy, sorry. Matt Duffy signed too. Um, minor league contract. I don't even know who that guy is. That's the great part about baseball free agency. Is sometimes you see these moves and you're like, who the hell is that? Guy? Dude, J- they still got Didi and JT Romuto and Reese Hoskins. That's that's a quietly a nasty, nasty lineup, bro. Right. The other Why day, don't... the other day, I was like, who's first base? And then I, I just like it dawned on me. I'm like Reese Hoskins. And yeah, then he's I, a he's a slugger. Right, dude, matches. And then, and then you look. They got um, Wheeler. Yeah, Zach. Yeah, Zach Wheeler. He almost won the Cy Young last year. Right. I mean, he was close. It was him. It was between him, Corbin Burns, and Max Scherzer. Right. Like Wheeler, crazy. Wheeler got me first place in fantasy baseball last year. Thank you. Very I much. I know. 
That was awesome. <laughs> yeah, we got that starting up again. That'll be fun to talk about once we get we can trash talk on fantasy baseball. Keon Wong signed with L.A. If anybody didn't know, Keon Wong is the brother of Colton Wong. The lesser of the Wongs so far. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's got a 167 career average and six RBIs, so he hasn't really played too many major league games, obviously. Well, I would hope. Mean? I would hope with a 167 and six RBIs. <laughs> you've got <laughs> but, more than me. But so, okay, we've had some big things happen. We've had Freeman on the move. We've had now Nick Castellanos is with the Phillies locked up. We've had um, Olsen... Um, Olsen to the Braves, Matt Chapman to the Chapman. Blue Jays. The it's, Blue Jays. The Blue Jays are just r- ridiculous, and and they've really, um, they've really been just f- a firestorm of moves, and it's crazy. They, the Blue Jays like won like forty six of their last sixty five games last year. Mi- just missed the playoffs, and they like they they have they like the best hitting team in baseball. What about like you're Seattle? Talking, you're talking what? Vlad. What about Seattle? Seattle's going to make the playoffs this year, my friend. You're, you're they, a big were, Seattle guy, so let's. They were they were one game away. They, yeah, they took two, they took two guys from the Reds. They took uh, Jesse Winker and um, um, the third baseman, Eugenio Suarez. Eugenio Suarez. Yeah, those guys are hitters, man. Like, look out, look out! The Mariners are coming at you. They're gonna they're making the playoffs. Right, Twelve team playoff. Let them in. It's ridiculous. Uh, where did um, now this see? This is how awesome this has been. Where did Sonny Gray and well, what was the deal with Sonny Gray? Do you remember the deal? I don't have the deal in front um, of me. Stroman, Baez. I want to say that he went to the Blue Jays. Oh, Twinkies. Oh, yeah, the Twinkies made all those moves too. That's another thing. The Twins made a bunch of moves. <laughs> <laughs> AL Central, baby. AL Central. Yeah. Oh, oh, the White Sox made some moves too. Right. Who are the White Sox grab? I saw. I, I think Fangraphs had Twins winning the Central, which is which is pretty startling to me because that that lineup out in Chicago is not the Southsiders. Pineda to the Tigers. It's nice, dude. It's so nice now that we're in a division where the where the Pirates are the Pirates, and the Reds are selling. So we we're in a division. It's a three team division. And yeah, the Cubs, we we can beat their pitching any day of the week. Like their pitching is kind of on the weak side, so it's us and the Cardinals, really. What did what did I say the other day? I said, why doesn't why doesn't Stearns get in on this fire sale? Why can't we grab some of the, some of this talent? Votto, yeah, sign Votto or trade dude, for, trade for Votto, dude. If we could take the rest of the years of Joey Votto, they wouldn't get rid of him. He's he's he fills seats still though. They gotta fill seats. They right. have nothing left. Right. Well, I don't know if they care. I don't know. Pittsburgh didn't care about filling seats all those years. No. I, I thought this the CBA was supposed to prevent the tanking. The tanking just seems to, to to be there with these teams. I don't think I don't look at tanking as a problem. No, I know, but it's still it's still a like there should I think and and we've made these discussions and had these conversations outside of podcasts and recorded land, but I think for the good of the sport, you want more competition across the board. And I think that move that they're making to have us teams play every team helps with that. I think it helps for the casual non-fan of baseball to see, oh, hey, Mike Trout's coming into town, and I've never seen Mike yeah, Trout before. That, you that, know, like, that, helps, that helps fill seats for sure. That so I think you want to have those sure. that star power, and I think – that's another thing that that Chris Bryant, oh, the Chris Bryant move. Yeah, that move was insane. Chris Bryant is a Rocky it's... for whatever reason. Oh, God. That's weird. I'm on MLB.com on my back screen, and uh, Dodger Freddie Freeman is sitting there. And that's just weird. Does he have a tie on? <laughs> is he wearing a tie? Let him wear a tie. He's a good guy. But he's, he's wearing a, a tie guy. under his jersey. That's strange. Okay, whatever. Um, Maybe he's gonna do that if he does that when he's playing. I'd be amazing. <laughs> the but and and that's the thing. You, you know, you have you have your things that are going 
to change this game, and it's just to the point where we're, we're getting better, and we're going to talk about this more in depth, probably in one of our next couple episodes. Um, I'd like to make a couple final comments. I want to thank Rob for being here today. Uh, getting to riff off with a friend is always the way to do it. And I think we had a good discussion. Uh, we kind of went all over the board, which is what happens every time we talk. Uh, maybe next time we'll come up with a better structure. Um, <laughs> do you got any final comments, any last things that are in your head? Um, well, number one, we'll talk again real soon. And we'll get we'll get a little more in depth about maybe some of these free agent moves. Uh, the Chris Bryant thing, yeah, that that's a move strictly just to fill some seats because the Rockies are not going for it. One more thing about the tanking: tanking is important because I would not want my team to just pay guys a bunch of money even though they know that they're going to like hover around seventy five wins. If they know that they're not playing for anything, I don't want them wasting a bunch of money unless they're going to build some new bars. You know, at least Miller Park would do that. When we would have losing seasons, they'd be like, okay, we're going to update the concessions while we're doing this rebuild. We're going <laughs> to, we're going to, you know, we're going to do this and that, you know, bells and whistles, but I don't want, I don't, I don't want them wasting money if they're not going to be winning. I'd rather have my team doing a fire sale like the Cincinnati Reds. Cause at least they know that there's an end in sight and you see tank, you see tanking work with the Cubs, with the Astros, like teams do this all the time. And some teams don't have to tank like the Dodgers, but some owners are more willing to spend money than others, you know. All right, I get you, I get you. So, I I think... Tanking good. I think that's, that's a solid point, and I, I, I go I totally am with, with where you're going. So, what, what I am going to say to you is we will continue to discuss <laughs> and debate, as we always do. We'll bring some of our text conversation to live form, maybe once a week if we can make this happen. Uh, it all depends on our, both of our schedules, obviously. But I really appreciate you coming on today, being a part of the Miller Park Minute, unofficial co-host, because I'm going to rock once in a while because I just have to riff every day about baseball because I'm so excited and so happy to be talking about baseball on the podcast and the YouTube channel again. So this will be up here in a while. Uh, I got to go do some drive some drunk people around so that won't happen right away but uh, thank he's you. working working man yeah. working man thank you uh so guys thank you for listening thank you for watching go over to anchor uh youtube apple podcasts and uh throw us a like and uh follow up for more content and if you haven't seen the most recent pod click back in the archives all of our podcast episodes are saved even if you go over to Five Tools page, you can listen to old Five Tool podcasts, which are kind of entertaining. So hit the archive. Hit the archives and check out the old Five Tool podcasts. Watch, you get some views. And you can thank there's me for good, popping them. There's a lot of good old COVID discussions going on there. There like is. During COVID we, baseball we, hit stuff. Some, we hit some points and, and they were solid. We made like good interviews. predictions too. So Yeah, we were pretty wild. <laughs> all right. That's all we thank got you. to say tonight. Thanks for coming on, man. You have a great night. Thanks for having me. Have a good night. Thank you, folks. Peace. Thank you for watching the Miller Park Minute. Go Brewers!